As we grow as disciples, we are going to look at a vital aspect of our growth, and that is our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We believe that God exists as a trinity, one God, three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, a main function of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is to help us to grow to be like what God originally intended for us. Made in the image of God, we are meant to be in communion with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to move us in that direction. So, in the next three weeks, we are going to look at what it means to be filled with the Spirit, to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, and to know and understand our ministry gifts, also known as spiritual gifts. Today, we're going to go over the fact that followers of Jesus Christ are filled with the Spirit. You can take sermon notes on the facing page to chapter 14, which starts on page 121. Today, I want you to know that the Spirit is there for us. The Spirit is there for you. And so I have two points. The first point is, allow the Spirit to work in you. Now, the Spirit works in us as we confess our sin and seek Him. A number of years ago, I heard a person talk on Psalm 32, and it was very powerful for me because it talked about the need that we have to confess before God and not hold it in. And so this is the way that text sounds. Verse 3, it starts, When I kept silent, My bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. And I think that's a very important phrase, being sapped. And so when we don't confess our sin to God, we feel ourselves weakened. The text goes on. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And I think that that text really speaks to the fact that we we need to know and understand that we're actually in a relationship with God that's powered by the Holy Spirit. And so the more we hold back, the more distant we become from God. And so here's a really important application about being filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit by confessing your sins to God. Be completely open because God already knows. Now, the thing about confessing your sins, it's just like Psalm 32. You can't hold it in. And I can't say this enough to people and to myself that God already knows. And if God already knows everything about me, there's really no point to holding it in. And I've experienced, and people through the ages have experienced, that when we confess our sins to God, all of a sudden we experience again that rush of being in the presence of God and a vital relationship with God. So the first way that we need to be filled with the Spirit, interestingly enough, is to confess our sins to God. Now the second way I think that we can be filled with the Spirit of God is we can be filled by the Spirit of God by seeking Him. James 4.8 says this, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Now that text in James 4 has a number of things that are around it, but what's interesting to think about is a phrase that comes before that, just before that in drawing near to God, and that's to submit to God. Now submission might not be a great way for you to think about seeking God, but it is a foundational way of doing that. And so how do we submit to God in order to draw near to God? We accept and embrace our life. And this is a part of confession. It's very easy for us to look at our life and to think, I wish it was different. And we create all sorts of fantasies about how we want our life to be different. And if we only had this, and if we only had that, because as they say, the grass is always greener on the other side. But instead, we need to seek God, and we need to seek God in the very life that we find ourselves. So now, Uh, If you're in a small group, we want you to take a moment and look at the core truth. Now, every time we're in a small group, we're going to be looking at the core truth in Discipleship Essentials, and you can find the particular core truth for chapter 14, being filled with the Spirit, on page 121. Here's the core truth. The question is, how are we empowered by God 
to want to follow Jesus? And the answer is, Jesus promised that he would not leave us alone, but would send the counselor who would come alongside to help. This counselor, known as the Holy Spirit, is free to work in us as we empty ourselves of known sin and seek to be continually filled with his indwelling power. So take a moment to look at two questions. The first one is restate the core truth in your own words. And second, what questions or issues does the core truth raise for you? And we're just going to hold those questions right here for you, and you can just answer those, and you can put the tape here on pause. The second is to be filled with the Spirit through acts of worship. Now, I want to illustrate that by reading Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, which talks about the Spirit and its relationship to acts of worship. It goes this way. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the, really, the first application of this, the really primary one, is to be filled with the Spirit by worshiping in spirit and in truth. I don't know if you realize this, but when you come to worship on a Sunday morning or if you're worshiping God on any given day, one of the most important things about worship is that as you do it, you're being filled with the Spirit. And as you worship Him in spirit and truth, God fills you with His own Spirit because you become one who comes into communion with God. And so whether it's giving thanks or whether it's worshiping Him with acts of worship like singing psalms or hymns or thanksgiving, what is happening in worship is that you're being filled by the Spirit. That's why I think it's very difficult for us in these days because we're experiencing worship very differently than we have in the past. We're not being able to gather together, and so we're learning how to worship in a new way online or in person out in a parking lot. Here's what I want to just call us to do is to understand that as we engage in worship, in whatever new setting we find ourselves in, we're being filled with the Spirit. Now, another way that we can be filled by the Spirit is by giving thanks. Now, thanks is really, really important because what it does is it turns our mind toward God. When you're not giving thanks and you find yourself in a place of despair, you find yourself in, in in going inward, and that inwardness just focuses in on yourself. But when you give thanks, when you give thanks for your friends, when you give thanks for your family, when you give thanks for the God who made you, you find yourself more and more being filled with the Spirit. So here's uh, something for small groups, and it's from Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. And the question is, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Another way of asking this question is, how do you view the purpose of the Holy Spirit in your life? What can you do today to be filled with the Spirit? We're just going to hold these questions up here, and I'd love for you as a small group to discuss them. Well, what are some final thoughts that we can have about being filled with the Holy Spirit? What we can really see and understand about being filled with the Holy Spirit is that when we open ourselves up, when we become expansive, we become people who come into communion with God, whether it's through worship or thanksgiving or just walking with him and being open to him, opening ourselves up by confessing our sins. What happens is we open ourselves up, God comes in. So think about these in these days. And now it's just time for prayer. I'd like to encourage you as you're thinking about prayer to pray in a couple ways. First of all, just pray around your table in ways that will help you to give thanks for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Second, after you've said amen after that first prayer, give thanks to God for what he's done for each other and then ask each other what you can be praying for, what spiritual things are going on in your life, and then pray for one another. So take some time right now to pray. Well, I hope that this week will be a week in which you invest your life in the Holy Spirit and being filled in the Spirit. And so hear God's benediction today. The Lord bless you and you are blessed. May you be blessed to know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life this day and in all days. 
May you be filled with the Holy Spirit. And may you know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is with you. And all God's people everywhere said, Amen.